Hello garden lovers. In this video, we will be sharing how we battle pests organically and how we are successful in most cases. This video will be one of five and we're starting with grubs, cutworms, and cucumber beetles. These guys can do a lot of damage in a short amount of time. And then in the next battling pest video, we will be sharing how we battle grasshoppers, caterpillar type pests that chew and devour your greens and foliage. So hit the subscribe button. It can be very discouraging when you've watched your baby plants grow from seed over several months and now a pest is wreaking havoc on them. And if we didn't prevent them from damaging the food we're growing, we wouldn't get very far past the seedling stage. Because one of our biggest pests is grubs. As we shared in our garden tour part one, this particular green chili plant was dying. Now you could see it's all the way completely dead. And when I lift up, this guy out of the soil, there is going to be no root system at all because when I got it planted, the grubs went after the young roots, started eating them up, and this plant didn't get very far. But we have two ways that we're battling these guys, and in most cases, we're successful. It's not completely 100% of the time, but in this bed, it was 99% of the time. All the other plants made it and we just lost one. The first way that we are battling grubs is with this grub and soil pest exterminator. We got this online from Green Thumb Nursery and they are live beneficial nematodes. You can see here they go after grubs, cucumber beetles, and many, many other soil dwelling pests. The package contains 5 million beneficial nematodes. You mix it in water, just follow the directions and water them in to the soil. And here is a description. Nematodes are microscopic worms that naturally occur in the soil. Predator to over 200 soil dwelling and wood boring pests. So these guys are definitely working, but it's not the only way that we're battling grubs. We are also doing something similar to the Charles Dowding's no dig method. If you haven't heard of him, he's an amazing market gardener out of the UK that has popularized the no dig method. And it is working excellent in our battle against the grubs. I'll take you over to another part of the garden to show you what I mean. But first, I'm gonna lift out this plant that has died, and I'm probably not going to find the grub. He's probably moved on because this guy's been dead for maybe a week and a half now. But what we're gonna see is it has no root development. Wow, look at that. <laughs> Just no roots at all. And it looks like the grubs started munching on this side. He just kept eating and eating until the plant died. And then he probably moved on to some of these more established plants. But thankfully, at a certain point, the plants get big enough to be able to withstand some of the insects chewing on them. You sound hot, buddy. <laughs> Is it a hot day? I'm gonna go ahead and dig in the soil to see if I can find this guy, but he probably has moved on. Let's see if we could catch one of these guys. He's probably moved over to this sunflower on the left. Well, darn it, I didn't find him. He's definitely moved on. But what I did find is this little cutie. And that was one concern that I had before using beneficial nematodes. 
I didn't want them to negatively affect the earthworms that are doing such an amazing job in the soil or the beneficial microbial life. And from all my studying, I found that the beneficial nematodes do not affect the earthworms. Well, we're toward the back half of the summer and it's time to get the pumpkins in the ground. So I'll grab one of these guys and use it as a demonstration in how we're doing something similar to the Charles Dowding's no dig method in our battle with the grubs. This is the first year that we have grown year round in the greenhouse and I'm just shocked that plants will actually grow in here. Sometimes the temps reach 120. But we have a shade cloth up and we even doubled up on the shade cloth just in the last week when our temps were 105. And the plants are doing okay. This is a volunteer pepper plant. When we were watering, one of the seeds must have fell down into this coconut container. The coconut plant didn't survive, but out popped this beautiful pepper plant. We were waiting to see what it was gonna produce, and here we have some beautiful bells. We haven't fed this guy at all, no nutrients, so it's definitely beat up, but we were curious to see what it was gonna do on its own. Very excited to taste these. All right, so basically what we're doing now is we're leaving the soil intact, keeping all the microbial activity in the soil undisturbed. And in addition to that, and what's working really well in fighting the grubs is when we are ready to harvest or remove the plant that is growing in the soil, we're basically coming in and just cutting the plant off at the soil level and leaving all of the root growth intact in the soil. And what we are finding is by doing this, if there are grubs munching on the plant, they continue to munch on those roots. Meanwhile, we come in, add a layer of soil mixed with compost, plant our seedlings, and it appears the grubs don't just run to the seedlings like they did in this case. This is a cantaloupe bed, and these guys didn't get very far past the seedling stage, and I believe it's because the grubs went right after the new root development and started eating it and stunted the growth. So I'm basically positive that's what happened here because in this bed there was no plants previously growing since end of last summer. So they didn't really have any root food to be chewing on. And when we came in here and removed a chunk to plant these Apache onions, we ran across some grubs and then did some more spot checking and sure enough, we were running across grubs like crazy. And you could see here, this cantaloupe bed did really well. And the difference between the two is this is all new dirt brought in to make a hill. So we know for certain that there were no grubs in this soil. And thankfully we planted multiple beds, otherwise we wouldn't have any cantaloupes this year. So again, what we've experienced is when there is no other root activity in the soil, then the grubs hone in on the new roots that are planted and they start munching on those. And obviously, if they're eating what little roots that the starts have, the plant doesn't get much of an opportunity to grow. This strategy has been working very well for us in most cases. Thankfully, because digging up the soil every time was just not an option anymore. It's too time consuming and it disrupts the beneficial microbe network in the soil. All right, so to demonstrate what we're going to do with these pumpkin starts, we're growing some really fun pumpkin varieties again this year. This one is called Big Max and it can grow up to a hundred pound pumpkin. Super fun. So I'm gonna come in here to these cantaloupes that didn't make it, cut them off at the soil level, leaving the roots intact. Unfortunately, in this case, there's probably not a lot of root development. 
So whatever's left, hopefully the grubs are going to stay chewing on that and not go straight to the new root growth on these pumpkin starts. All right, got the cantaloupe vines removed. Next, I'm going to come in with some EB Stone planting mix. I can't find Dr. Earth anymore. If you guys know where to locate the Dr. Earth soil in Southern California, let me know because I really love that soil. All of our dirt is DG, it's decomposed granite. We have almost no good soil on our property, so we do have to buy some, but we have started our own compost bins. We're getting away from the tumblers. We have large compost bins, so we're gonna have a lot of great compost to be adding. And we won't have to buy this soil booster, which is the compost mix that we're gonna be adding to the soil. This is a great product though. You can see here, added chicken manure, earthworm, castings, all kinds of great stuff. And of course it's EB Stone, so it's organic. So I'm gonna get about four inches of soil on top of this existing soil, and then mix in quite a bit of compost because pumpkins are heavy feeders and love a soil rich in organic matter. And then I'll get these guys planted. Wrap the soaker hoses around the base of the plant and get a shade cloth over these guys for about a week. Pumpkins love full sun. They do thrive in hot conditions, but when the plant's young, especially for the first week, week and a half, we'll get them protected from the intense UV rays. Make sure they get lots of water each day. After that, they'll get their water from the soaker irrigation hose, and hopefully the grubs in the soil will stay focused on the cantaloupe roots, and the pumpkin roots will grow quickly before the grubs move over to start chewing on their roots. And this video is going way too long again, so I'm gonna speed through the cucumber beetle because I can't believe it, but we don't have any cucumber beetles yet this season. And I'm in front of our tomatillo plants because, it's funny, we have never had cucumber beetles on our cucumber plants, but they love our tomatillo plants. Look at this little cutie. Let's see if I could zoom in. Oh my gosh, adorable. There we go, that's a better shot. What a cutie pie. We have so many adorable lizards running around all over our property, and thankfully, Jet has finally stopped trying to hunt them. It's shocking, but very thankful that we don't have any cucumber beetles yet, but we were prepared, and they still may show up. This year, we found a cucumber beetle lure. This is the trap and here is the cucumber beetle lure. You place this in the yellow trap and it draws them over there and traps them. So we may not end up using these guys this year and that's just fine with me because man cucumber beetles are a major pain. They're constantly reproducing. Every time you see them out in the garden, they're on top of each other, and they lay their little eggs under the leaves. The larvae come out, and they just start devouring the leaves so quickly. And even though we haven't seen any this year, we have been proactive in battling these pests since they were young seedlings. So when they were young, we got them covered with this mesh tent. It's a perfect shade and pest protector. If you're interested in the information, leave a note in the comments. But once these guys get up to about three foot tall, then that tent does not help them. So at that point, it's keeping an eye on them, inspecting them daily, because early detection is key with those guys. And since I haven't seen any cucumber beetle activity, I haven't broke out the lure yet, but we're ready for them. 
And a couple of years passed when we experienced a cucumber beetle infestation on our tomatillos. We broke out the DE diatomaceous earth helps, but the problem is it could get on the blossoms and then the bees go to the blossoms and the DE will cut them up. So if we use DE, we like to keep it down on the soil. And if we do miss the leaves, then we do it late in the evening when there's no breeze. And then we come in early morning and rinse it off before the bees come out. And early detection is key with these guys. With the grubs, they're under the soil. We have no idea where they're at, but with these guys, inspecting the plants is definitely key. Removing them before they start really multiplying and laying their eggs all over your plant leaves. Very stoked that they have a cucumber beetle lure. They say to place it right outside, maybe about 400 feet because you want those guys to be attracted away from the plants that they like multiplying on. Wow, we only covered a couple of insects and it's already been probably about 15 minutes by the time I get this edited. If I went through all of the insects that we battle in the garden, this video would be over an hour long. So we'll take it a few insects at a time. So keep your eye out for the next battling Pest video will be grasshoppers, caterpillar type pests that devour your greens and foliage like the tomato hornworm. All right, that's it for now. Hope you guys enjoy your week and enjoy your garden. Mm -hmm.